Welcome to episode 12 of Sport Oregon Voices. We're here at the Sport Oregon office in Portland to talk all about Portland Track and the upcoming Portland Track Festival. Portland Track is a nonprofit organization that creates, organizes, and supports events and programs that grow the sport of track and field and running here in Portland. I'm Corey Hansen, Director of Brand at Sport Oregon, and we're joined today by Portland Track President Jeff Merrill and Portland Track Vice President Michael Bergman. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. And with that, I'll let the two of you introduce yourselves. I'm Jeff Merrill, uh, Portland Track Board President. And strange to say that because you were always the president. <laughs> Yeah, so now I'm, I'm Michael Bergman. I'm currently the vice president of the organization, and um, I was the president for the previous six years. Let's, let's hear a little bit more about your guys' background with the sport before we start. Let's see. How far back do we want to go? Uh, uh, Michael might go a little farther back than you. But... Oh, man. Watch <laughs> that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I started running when I was, when I was younger. Came from a, a family of exercisers, and then... Ran in high school, um, ran at University of Michigan, and then came out here and, um, I mean, dabbled in the, the post-collegiate scene. And then we got really interested in, well, I've always been really interested in, in track meet directing and um, just the production of the sport. So I uh, got involved with Portland Track in 2018, I believe. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I rabbited a race actually in 2015, 14, something around well, there. But did we pay you well? Yeah, one lap. I mean, yeah, I rabbited the eight. <laughs> Should have stayed there. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah. So I I grew up actually. I was never talented enough to do any other sports other than run. And I skied, but um, I actually ran for the Portland Track Club as an age grouper. So back when I was 10, you know, 10 years old uh, into high school. So I ran in high school, uh, ran at, for a couple of years in college at University of Arizona. And then, you know, continued to just train, but not do anything too serious. And then um, really got back involved in the sport when my oldest son volunteered me to coach um, at uh, through a CYO program at Holy Trinity and um, probably put together the most talented coaching staff um, ever with uh, you know, American record holder in the 10,000 meters, Mark Nenow, John Chuax, Josh Rowe. I mean, a lot of these. So we had a, um, you know, we kind of built the CYO track program and that continued my love in the coaching area. And then in 2016, was asked to become the president of Portland Track. So uh, here we are. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about the history and mission of Portland Track. So Portland Track has been around for about 15, 12, 13. 2008. 2008. So 15 years. And it started as a, a middle school meet. Uh, it's, it evolved into having local hotshots competing, and then with the um, evolution of a lot of the training groups being based here, we started to add professional races to the, to the meet. So it was really a unique atmosphere where we'd have middle school, high school, college, post-college, and pros all running in the same meet. And we kept it, you know, a really festive atmosphere. And um, in 2016, when I took over as the president, I felt it was really beneficial to rebrand and, and kind of set the tone for what we wanted to um, stand for in Portland uh, because you have, uh, and so we, through the rebranding process, we really came down with a simple philosophy of um, athletes first. So every single decision we made as an organization, which is all volunteer by the way, um, we we really focused on the athlete experience and it, whether it's a middle schooler or high schooler or, or a prof professional and i think that served us well over the last you know five six years and, and it continues on with jeff's leadership now yeah i know that athletes first isn't just lip service you guys live that every day uh jeff tell us how you got involved with portland track and how you've seen the organization evolve over the last few years 
Well, I guess 2018 was when I started, and um, I, I dabbled in meat directing before. I put on a, a road mile in my hometown of Lodi, California, and then uh, been around the sport, um, friends with, uh, I was friends with a lot of the pros in the area, and uh, there are always these discussions around, like, what can we do to make the sport better or more popular or, um, or whatever it is, and um, so I, I, was, I was always involved in those, but I wanted to do something, too. <laughs> so uh, I think when I, I sat down with Craig Masbach, who was working at Nike, and he's the former CEO of USATF, and I said, man, I've got these ideas of what, what I'd like to do to, to help shape the sport, and I, I want to uh, get my hands dirty a little bit. So he pointed me in the direction of Portland Track and said, Portland Track's doing a lot of really interesting things and they're open to new ideas. And um, so I, I reached out to Bergie and said, hey, I've got, I want to do stuff. And uh, I was careful to say like, I, I got all these ideas that you guys yeah. should implement. And I, because I, I really wanted to, to make it happen too. It's one thing to, to say that, oh, I've got these ideas or this is <laughs> the way that I think things should be and the way that you should do things. And so that that's great, but who's going to do it. And we've always been an organization too, ever since I've known it, that if you have an idea, then you got to be willing to do it and you have to be the one willing to make it happen. And then let's rally everybody around it and, and try and like make this thing as big as it can be. So I think that really touches on the community aspect of, of Portland track too. Like we've got a great running community in Portland. There's a lot of really awesome clubs with unique identities and, and traditions and cultures. And we try to be that connecting piece and, um, yeah, just, just try and liven that up and, uh, bring everybody together. And, and if anybody has an idea, then it's like, okay, we'll flex in this direction and make that happen. And let's just make cool things happen in the running community. That's, that's the goal. Hailing from Lodi, are you Lodi's most famous export? <sighs> no, I don't think so. Um, who might that be? That, <laughs> I mean, Creedence Clearwater isn't from Lodi, but okay. yeah, they were stuck there for a little bit. Some time. Robert Mondavi, maybe? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. A&W started there? Okay. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. So, no. Well, back to Oregon. Um, Oregon's really the running capital of the world. We've got Tracktown USA a couple hours down the road, but what makes Portland special when it comes to supporting track and fields? Well, I've, I've always said that Portland is actually First of all, it's a bigger population base than Eugene, but I really think that Portland is a bigger track and field community than anywhere in the state and a lot of places in the country. If you look at our history, you've got the Krausers, Galen Rupp, you know, Mac Wilkins, um, and just the, you know, just an, uh, a huge amount of track and field um, history based, you know, from Portland. And, um, and I think we have the unique opportunity to put on a high quality middle distance meet in the city that, that basically, you know, can generate, allows people from Portland to watch the event here versus having to drive down I-5. I mean, Hayward Field's amazing, Track Town USA is amazing, but we wanna be able to host meets in our own hometown um, to really generate. And it also helps, um, I would say it helps Eugene as well if we're, we're bringing track and field and, and racing to Portland, collaborating with Eugene to make, really float the boat up. Yeah, I, I, just to piggyback on that, I would say that, I mean, there's a lot of talk about the Hayward faithful and who those people are that fill the stands, but a lot of the Hayward faithful drive down I-5 from Portland. And um, Portland, I think, is poised more than any other city, big city in the United States, to be the track city in the United States. We've got, we've got everything here. We've got all of the, the major running brands here. We've got a lot of the professional teams. The culture of running in the city is, is unlike um, most cities around the country. And I think Portland itself, too, lends itself to adopting fringe things as well. And uh, track, although it was in the limelight in the 60s and 70s, 
it's it's not as much these days. And if we look at um, it is still in, in areas like Eugene and Portland. But if you look at uh, Soccer City, I mean, we're sitting right across from from Providence Park here. Um, like we're kind of looking at the timbers and the thorns and what they've done to really catapult themselves into the limelight in this city. And we can do that with track as well. So like we've got the makings of it. Yeah, and you mentioned some of the athletic apparel industry stalwarts that are here. Walk us through a little list of those that have their, their US headquarters, if not their world headquarters here. Well, we've got Nike here, um, and then Adidas has their US headquarters here. Um, on has their North America headquarters here on running. Um, Hoka just moved up, uh, a product team here. Who else do we, I miss? Under Armour. Under Armour is here as well. Lulu's uh, got a footwear division. <laughs> yeah, Lululemon here. Like We've got Brooks right up the road in Seattle too, so the Brooks Beasts come down to compete. Um, yeah, they're, they're very fond of the meat. But yeah, it's we're this kind of center with an international airport, great cuisine. I mean, you know, the food here. Oh, Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> if you wanna, if you wanna get a meal after running at a meet, you wanna be in Portland. Mm -hmm. So, I think yeah, Portland is is the place to be. Cool. And we saw the amazing talent that descended on Eugene last year for the World Championships. But from an athlete's perspective, why do athletes want to compete here in Portland? I think it's well to credit um, Berge and then everybody that's come before us too to build this meet. Uh, it's, it's become kind of a cult classic style track meet in the country where people, I mean, we, we do a lot of work to mythologize I, the, the city and the meet itself here. And I think that's something that in track, um, I, I feel needs to happen more where, um, every meet that we put on every, every year that we put on the Portland track festival, we think long and hard about what can we do to make this meet in particular special and stand out amongst all the other meets. So it's not just a meet where athletes are running to get times, they get um, amazing times and, and a lot of athletes hit standards at this meet, but it matters to take a win at this meet too, which is something that's really exciting. And athletes like to make statements in the electric forest, so we call the, the stadium here. Um, yeah, I think those kinds of things matter to athletes and we build that, that persona and that excitement. I guess if Hayward Field is like the frontier land uh, of track and field, maybe we're the fantasy land <laughs> or <laughs> yeah, little fantasy go. tomorrow land mix. It there works go. out. <laughs> yeah. yeah and, and just to add, add to that, um, as you remember, the um, Oregon 22, would not have happened had we not had the world indoor meet that was in Portland. So uh, Oregon 22 was um, basically sold to the World Athletics because we, were, we had a very, very successful world indoor meet that was based in Portland. And that was a deciding factor in, in getting that meet to Eugene. And I, and I think you know, having that in place would just to show you that the, the 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 stadium was packed, the house of track was packed every night with kids out there running, training, and then, you know, so we definitely need an indoor track in Portland to really complete the the whole circle here. So putting on meets is your bread and butter with Portland track. Talk about the national and international prestige that comes from winning a race here. Um. Well, Jeff, I'll let you tap onto that and then I'll... Yeah, well, I think, yeah, we, we do a lot of work, like I was saying, in building up what, what the wins mean. And I think digging deeper into that, when we, when we put on a meet, we like to tell the story of, of what each athlete is doing out there. I think um, a, a track race is, by all accounts, uh, everyone's trying to get to the line as fast as they can. But... To the average viewer, the casual viewer, a lot of them just think that they're running as fast as they can every time. Uh, but they're not. It's a, it's a high-speed chess game where each athlete has to take stock of what the other athletes bring to the table and what moves they're going to make and how they're going to counter it. So it's, it's really a representation of uh, each individual's unique approach and who they are. And when they're exerting themselves as much as they are driving to the line, they're showing themselves for, for who they really are. I think you get to see them 
get to, you, we all get to shine in that light. And, and each athlete defines each other in contrast to who they're competing against too. And they bring out the best in each other. So um, taking that win in, a, in an event like that and us being able to um, tell that story and only add things to the story to communicate to the fans uh, what's going on on the track and not add elements that distract from it. It's like all attention on the track. This means something here. Um, that carries over and people people see what that means and we keep lists of, of previous champions that go all the way back and we highlight who those people are and, and how they did it. And I think that goes a long way with the, the international community and people want to come from every corner of the globe to, to win here. The great yeah. Can I, 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 energy. Yeah, and I would add, <clears throat> just beyond the win, um, I would, we pride ourselves in giving every single athlete a fair shot to compete to, their, to compete to their best abilities. So it doesn't matter what brand they run for. It doesn't matter what team they're on. They enter a meet with a seed time. We put them in a race that makes, creates an opportunity for them to do their best. And... Mm -hmm usually you know, more often than not and then the other point is is you, you know as an athlete you compete a lot better when you're relaxed so the portland track festival has an atmosphere that creates a little bit of relaxed uh, you know approach to things but it also helps elevate their performance as a result of that and i mean we've had national records you know U.S. land records. I mean, all of these things have happened as a result of just creating that culture and that atmosphere to, for athletes to compete, you know, to, their, to the best of their ability, giving them a fair shot. And your meets each feature youth, masters, and open races, in addition to the 90-minute hot window. Is that unique on the race circuit? And why is it important to celebrate each of those groups? I would say, well, they're... Well, that's how the meet started uh, as a as a middle school meet, and then it grew grew from there. Um, having these local professional groups here and them wanting an opportunity early, and then and then we kind of grew and molded it from there organically. So uh, we've shaped that that schedule to be focused on the what we call the hot window at the end, which is just the the top heats. So that's the professional sports. Um, window of time. If you were, if you want to tune in and watch the fast races, then it's 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. on Sunday night this year. But throughout the day, everybody gets an opportunity to go out there and, and show out and do like do what they can and, uh, and make a name for themselves too. So I think giving people that kind of opportunity and building that culture and uh, it like we want to be as inclusive and approachable as, as possible. I think there's this, this um, assumption out there for a lot of groups that in order to feel important you have to be exclusive and and be this is the this is the highest level of competition here but I think part of the na game for us is we want to mythologize as much as we can and build importance and then welcome everybody into that story and have them be a part of it yeah and I and I think um, you know I'm in addition to that, um, I think having the middle school, high school, elite, and pros all in one meet, but it is middle distance. We, we focus our efforts on as a middle distance meet. And I've always, I think track and field could, is for the casual observer going to a track meet, uh, it's like going to an NFL, MLB, NBA game all at once and not you're not quite sure what to watch you know with the pole vault high jump chop put discus hammer steeplechase sprints hurdles all those things you have to be a pretty educated track fan to really appreciate all the things that are happening and the Prefontaine Classic is it's artistic it is a well orchestrated meet so we've tightened the event groups down to middle distance um, so they think about like, you know, Formula One, you're kind of watching the strategy of when people are, you know, making the moves or passing. That happens in our meet. And, and it's really exciting to see. Um, but I think having that focused event group that are tied to kind of Olympic standards and world standards really makes it 
that unique and it, it helps educate people about track and field. And I feel like that the competition and strategy is across all those levels. And I love what you said about making it inclusive versus exclusive. It feels very representative of the city that you represent. Yeah, we're, a, we're an organization of the city. Love it. <laughs> and I want to add, Portland Track does more than just put on track meets. You're a grassroots organization operated by the community, for the community. Why is community so important? And what other engagement opportunities does Portland Track have planned for the summer? I think in, in our minds, it's why, what, why not, or what, it, what would it be for without the community, I guess. Like, if a tree falls in the forest kind of thing. Why do professional sports exist and, and why do sports in general exist? It's to bring people together. So that's, that's a huge part of it. I think what we focus on is um, we want to elevate the sport of track and field and running within the city, but we also want to use the sport to elevate the city in general too. So it's, that's why we exist. This is an all volunteer organization and um, that allows us to, to make decisions around just what's best for our community because this is where we all live and uh, yeah we want it to be the best place that it could possibly be and infused with the sport that we love too and it's part of your dna to be active supporters and participants of the portland community you've done an incredible job supporting partners like sport oregon mm -hmm. so tell us about your involvement with sport oregon and why it's important for you to be active in this space I look at uh, Sport Oregon as an amazing partner, um, both in in Portland and then a you know for Portland Track to be connected in other cities within Oregon. And you and I have already you know, we, we covered a, a, a session on Maupin, so that's a great example of how you know the sport can actually create social change through that through a. Uh, an amazing venue. And 300 days of sunshine in Maupin? 300 days of sunshine, yeah. So it's, uh, <clears throat> according to Craig Ingalls, it's uh, 380 days of sunshine. <laughs> yeah. but, so, <laughs> but, uh, He's only 15 years old, too. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but, I mean, I've, you know, oh, uh, Sport Oregon uh, partnered with Tracktown USA on the Tracktown Youth Series, and, and they, did these pop-up track beats all through the state that led up to the world championships. I, you know, I think that's a great, you know, model. I'm, I'm continuing to get uh, contacted by coaches in those communities saying, hey, is this happening again? I was like, well, hold on. We, we might have something like that. Um, the other part is <clears throat> from a, we have our board meetings here. So we're really appreciative of, you know, not having to gather in a loud pub and try to, um, you know, <laughs> try to conduct a, a, a board meeting, but having this space has been, you know, fantastic. And, and also I think just being able to have the access as a board member for, of Sport Oregon myself, having access and also relationships with other corporate leaders that are part of Sport Oregon. And, you know, an example, a great example, this year is um, we are partnering with KGW. So KGW is going to do a couple morning shows for us. They're going to probably do the weather the day of the meet. So and then we're working with them on showing the 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 stream after the event on their app. So having KGW as a partner, a media partner with us is great. But that was a connection through Sport Oregon. It w wouldn't have happened without it. We appreciate your service and how engaged you are on the board. But let's talk about why we're all here. So you've got the first big event of the summer coming to Mount Hood Community College, June 3rd and 4th. Give us the details. What is Portland Track Festival? So it's uh, the biggest meet, well, de by far in Portland, and it's the pinnacle um, track, yeah, track event in, in the city every year. And something that everybody in the community uh, running community looks forward to and and worldwide as well um last year we had 27 people from 27 countries tune into the broadcast um so it's it's races of all levels like we were saying uh for two days and sunday is the the biggest day um so sa yeah saturday night we'll have the the top heats of the steeplechases and the 10,000 meters and then 
uh, Sunday we will have the 800s, 5000s, and 1500s, and uh, of all levels. And I, I think like, uh, well, we've touched on this already, but the depth of this meet is is ridiculous too. We do have all levels, um, but any high performing track athlete in the US, middle distance athlete is trying to make it into these top heats. So for example, um, the equivalent of a four minute mile is a 343, 1500, thereabouts. We had over 50 uh, men enter the meet last year at that mark. So everybody's trying to get into that, that top heat and there's only 10 or 12 spaces up there. So you have to run the equivalent of a 352 mile basically to make it into that top heat to take the top prize. And that's equivalent across the board for, for these top races too. So I would say that's, that's the kind of thing that you're looking for or looking towards when you, when you come to the Portland track festival, uh, or you tune in online. So, and it's exciting the way that these, these guys, these men and women are driving to the tape and trying to secure that trophy. This year we've got log rounds as trophies. So, Take that log round in the electric forest. Yes, they uh, to the forest. Uh, quickly talk about the hot window. Sunday night, what's it going to be like? I think it's, it's a spectacle that grows every year. And we kick it off with the, uh, the Portland versus Seattle 3,000 meter race, which is, to the, to the viewing world, it's, it is a spectacle. Uh, it's something that people are talking about. Like, what is this? We usually have a, the Unipiper come out. And, and grace the track uh, <laughs> and the crowd cheers. This year we're gonna unveil some TIFO uh, that's representative of all the running clubs in Portland too before the hot window starts. And Portland versus Seattle 3K is uh, a scored 3000 meter race between the local club runners in Portland and Seattle. And it's for the Cascadia Axe that is taken either to Seattle or to Portland every year. Uh, last year, Seattle won by two points, I believe. So the axe is with them, and Portland is really wanting that thing back. So they're going to be getting after it. But that's what kicks it off, and then but, we go. And it's a co-ed race that it's is race. that that is um, a, a, a staggered start. So in theory, everybody should be crossing the line at the same time. So the men start roughly, or the women 30. start roughly 70 seconds ahead of, of the men's, and it's usually pretty tight at the line, and it's super exciting. Um, but from there, we kick it into the, the pro races. So we'll go into the men's and women's 800 meters, and then the men's and women's 5,000 meters, and then high school uh, men's and women's, oh, high school races as yeah. well. Yeah. Uh, top, top mile races for the girls and boys. And then to cap off the evening, we're going to have the men's and women's 1500 meters, which is always the pinnacle event at the Portland Track Festival. But it's, it's just boom, boom, boom. Like the, the energy and the crowd is, is amazing because you've got these athletes just fighting for those top places. And they know that of everybody who's come to this meet, um, it's close to a thousand athletes every year for people who are competing. These are the very top and in the world that day, they could be watching, well, they likely will be watching the fastest race in the world take place. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, and, and on the high school side, we've, <clears throat> we've heard that Tyrone Gorzi is going after the US record in the 10,000 on Saturday night. And Sadie Englehart is going after the national high school record in the mile. And Will he Heslam from Roosevelt is trying to break four minutes in the mile. So I think there's, that hot window will both on Saturday night, but then also on Sunday night specifically, there's going to be some great races at every level. And a couple of years ago, just to um, add to, to Jeff's, you know, just the atmosphere of that hot window, Craig Masbeck, who is the vice president of Nike Sports Marketing, he came to the meet with his family. It was the year that, you know, um, Hobbs Kessler broke the, you know, the um, I think American record in the 1500. Yeah, he's a and high school kid. High school he kid ran faster than any college kid had ever run. Yeah, so he he ran that, but the meet the races went one after another after another, and I went up and I asked, hey, what do you think? And he's been to, well, he's been an Olymp he's an Olympian, multi Olympian. He's 
been to every Olympics through with his work at Nike and USATF. Um, and he said, this is the best track meet I have ever been to in my life. So to come from a guy like that was a pretty good compliment. I think we've, yeah, we've heard what we always shoot for and how we structure the schedule and just the presentation of the meet is, what the f did I just see? <laughs> like, we want people to say that. And we've heard that a few times from people directly, and it's been, it's a good feeling. But, hey, all right, we hit the mark then. Yeah, you talked about the local talent. How many countries represented are you expecting? Um, I would say that, well, it, there's at least two dozen uh, most years. So from all over the globe, I, yeah, from five continents um, last year, I believe. Mm -hmm. And you're not just the president of Portland Track, also the founder of Tracklandia. Tell us a little bit about Tracklandia and the pay-per-view streaming model that you pioneered. So Tracklandia was born from Portland Track, and it, was, uh, it started as a kind of a talk show, like a late night talk show style show with athletes. Uh, that Andy Weeding and I started at uh, uh, Michael's uh, suggestion to have an interview show. And we were like, well, we want to do it a little differently here. And, um, and then from there, it kind of, uh, as we got into the pandemic and we put on some, uh, we put on five pro level meets that were locked down on secret locations in Oregon and some of the top athletes in the world, uh, we started broadcasting our own meets. And in that, um, in that time period, I had a conversation with Pete Julian, who's the coach of the Union Athletics Club, and we were talking about streaming options and how track is shown these days, and um, a lot of it is behind a paywall. And he didn't like that uh, because the athletes don't see any of that money. Um, so his, his example was Donovan Brazier, who was running at these meets, is the world champion in the 800 meters. Um, if he's running in the meet, he doesn't see any of that money and his mom has to pay to watch him race. So initially we were like, okay, let's make these, let's make this free. But then we thought, well, if we charge five ninety nine, dollars uh, we can give a large percentage of that to the athletes and put it straight into the prize purse so that athletes are competing for this and it's, they're paid out based on merit. And then uh, fans can have a hand in influencing uh, the competition or the quality of competition in those races by boosting the purse. And the more viewers we get, um, the bigger the purse gets and the more athletes get paid for what they do. So it ended up being the first uh, broadcast revenue sharing program with athletes in the sport of track and field. And it's something that we, we do today. Athletes first. So for those who can't make it to the events, share how they can still support Portland Track and the Track Festival. So you can go to tracklen.com, uh, and that's T-R-A-C-K-L-N-D.com, and you can purchase a pay-per-view ticket there, and uh, $3 of that ticket, that $5.99 purchase, will go straight into the, the prize purse, and it'll be distributed evenly across all 10 of the, the top heats. Um, you could also sweeten the pot in those races as well, which is, if you go to each individual race, you can click on a button and say, I want to throw 50 bucks into that, that race there and, and elevate the stakes. You can do that. And you can also add a little note and say, hey, Craig Engels, like, go take this. And uh, Craig's, Craig's one of the top 1,500 runners in the U.S. So, and he's a fan favorite. In the Certainly. Course. <laughs> Let, let's look back at last year's track festival, the Electric Forest. What were a few highlights? Well, I'd say it was great to just get people back in the stands. I mean, to me, gathering for a track meet was a celebration in itself. Just being able to get, get back out there and, and at least, you know, and then I think it was a relief to the athletes as well to come out and compete and, and at least know that they, you know, the sport, a lot of their work was going to be paid off. And I think, uh, you know, last year, I'm trying to remember which of the, the races were. I think a big one uh, was the women's 1500 where Carissa Schweitzer ran four flat and went out in 61, which is four, four flat or 404 mile pace. So she's one of the, a Bowerman Track Club athlete and, and Team USA athlete. And that was, the stands were definitely rocking for that. Uh, that was an exciting race. And Eleanor Fulton too. 
uh, who trains locally pulled out for second in that race as well. So that was, that was a big one. Yeah. And if you had your eye on one, one race or one athlete this year during the hot window, what, what's can't miss? I, I couldn't pick one because they're all, once the, the heats go up, it's, it's, all bets are on. You basically, it's like a horse race. You just, you, you can just hope for an amazing event. Um, the, I always love the 15s and the 8s. I, I look at the 800s, um, and whether you're in the top heat or the second fastest heat, those could be, the second fastest heat could be one in 145. And so you're starting to kind of look at just the quality and the depth of the fields. Um, and, and it's always good to be able to, you know, how many athletes are below 340 or how many females are below four minutes. And, and those are great, you know, barometers of the quality of the meet. Yeah, I think uh, I'm definitely looking forward to Portland doing their best to take back the Cascadia Axe in the Portland versus Seattle 3000. And I know that, like, the way that that kicks off the hot window, too, it just piques everybody's uh, excitement about what they're about to see. So, yeah, and the pros get ready, too. When they see that, it's a spectacle, and they're like, okay, well, we've got to top that now. we got to bring home the cup this year. We do. Yeah. Um, okay, we're nine or ten days out from the Portland Track Festival. For those watching, listening at home, why should they come out to Mount Hood Community College? Well, this year, this year... I mean, Lewis and Clark is under construction, so historically we've had it there over the last few years. But I'm very excited about actually having it at Mount Hood because parking's great. It's a great track. It, a very similar atmosphere as far as the forest around it. But this year we're adding a beer garden, food carts, and you know I think just I think the atmosphere is going to be magic with a lot of that other activity happening. Yeah, I think you'll have those, and then uh, we're encouraging everybody to create their own artwork in the stands, too. So if you have favorite athletes and you want to draw a picture of them or, or write a motivational phrase, go ahead. And then if you're a part of a local club, high school, uh, whatever it is, wear your gear, uh, represent. And we're going to have all the club um, banners and flags draped over the, the fencing around the track too. So it'll be a uniquely Portland experience. And this thing is gonna be broadcast worldwide. So people will get to see what, what Portland's all about. The finest side of it. And I think, um, so basically you asked, the tickets are $15 for adults. Mm -hmm. I think we, you know, what, what have we've, we've decided it's 18 or 12 and under for, that are free. Right now, we're, it's 12 and under. 12 and under. So bring your families. Yeah. Well, thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Michael. And thanks to all of you for joining us today. We want to encourage all of you to check out a Portland Track event this summer, whether it's a high-performance meet, a fun run tour through local breweries and eateries, or a cultural event. Bring a friend and join our growing community of passionate track fans here in the Rose City. To stay informed about all things Portland Track, Follow on Twitter at Portland Track and on Facebook and Instagram at PDX Track. That's all for episode 12 of Sport Oregon Voices. We hope to see you next weekend at Mount Hood Community College for the Portland Track Festival.